Okay, welcome back to the workshop. In today's video, I'm gonna be unboxing, testing, trying out, giving you my first impressions on the new Axminster Professional Scroll Saw. Now, this is one of the best scroll saws on the market, so I'm really excited to have it in the workshop and start using it in my builds. So, yeah, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's get opening. So, let's remove this tape. Now it does say here that this product has been previously been opened by Axminster. It's good to know that Axminster have already opened this box to check that the product is in good condition and it hasn't been damaged in transport. And on the top here we have a message that says do not lift the saw by the upper arm and it gives you two lifting points one on the motor and one on the front of the table. Nice and clear. Obviously, they don't want you to damage it by lifting up that arm. Okay, so I'm gonna lift out this expanded polystyrene. Oh, there you go. This looks really nice and high quality. And you've got two more blocks of packaging to remove. Now, this scroll saw is pretty well built and heavy, so it might be a challenge lifting it out, but we'll give it a go. It looks like it is mounted onto a wooden base, so I'm gonna need to lift that as well. And I've got one hand under the motor here, and one hand on the front of the table. Okay. So underneath the scroll saw, you've got the instruction manual, you've got some spare blades and a spare lever and bolts for attaching the blade when the ones on the scroll saw wear out. And you also get a spare fuse. Okay, so I'm gonna remove these bolts to release the scroll saw from this wooden base. So that is the scroll saw. I am so impressed with it. It is really high quality, really sturdy. It is up there now with one of my favorite tools and I haven't even used it yet. So before I use it, I'm just gonna tell you all the features it has. So first of all, let's start off with the table. This table is 345 millimeters by 597 millimeters, and it is six millimeters thick. It is the beefiest scroll saw table I've ever seen. And it's got an epoxy coating, so it's really smooth. The wood's gonna glide across it really easily, and it's not gonna rust. Another feature I really like that I haven't actually seen before is the dust collection isn't a plastic insert. Normally, with a bandsaw or other tools like this, you have a plastic insert that clips in, sometimes it's not level. Whereas with this table, there are holes actually drilled into the steel. And I think it looks a lot nicer. It's a much better design and you won't ever have to worry about the plastic insert breaking or not being level. And while I'm on dust collection, there is a dust port right underneath a saw blade. So it's collecting all the dust right from the source as soon as it's being made. And if any dust remains on the top of the workpiece, there is this nozzle here that will blow the dust away so you can continue to see the line that you're cutting on. While we're in this area, you have a blade guard on the top and bottom. This top blade guard also acts as a support that you can lower and rest on the top of your workpiece, and that will stop the workpiece from lifting up and down if you uh, loosen the pressure of the workpiece. It's just a nice safety feature. This scroll saw has the easiest blade change I've ever seen. It's completely tourless. It's got the pegger system. There's this lever on top that you pull forward that will release the tension on the blade. And then there's this butterfly knob that you turn. It releases the blade, then you can put a new one in. This scroll saw takes pinless blades, which is great because there's so many varieties you can get. And another feature that really surprised me is you can take a quarter inch bandsaw blade, cut it up into 150 millimeter sections and install that in the scroll saw. So if you wanted to cut thicker material, it actually takes a bandsaw blade. I've never seen that before, and that is an awesome feature. And with the blades you're not using, on the side of the machine, you'll see these holes here. That is actually blade storage. There's a hook on the other side, so the blades are supported. You can put the test tubes that the blades come in into the slot, or just the blade itself. And because the blade change is so quick, as you're working, if you've got a much tighter curve you wanna cut, 
inside a component, you can release this lever, take that blade out, lean to the side, get a new blade, put that in and start cutting again. The scroll saw has four feet with mounting holes. You can actually buy a floor stand from Axminster's website, but if you wanna mount it onto a board or your workbench, you can do it through these holes here. In the manual, Axminster actually recommend putting a rubber mat underneath the scroll saw before you mount it onto something, and that's gonna really help reduce vibration and give you more control. To tension the blades, you've got this knob at the back that you turn. The scroll saw is variable speed and you've got this knob on the top that controls that. It goes from 400 to 1,400 strokes per minute. This on and off switch at the back controls the power to the scroll saw. It isn't actually the on button. So to turn on the scroll saw, you press this green button at the back, which brings power to the machine. And then you've got this button on the front, which is the actual on and off button. You wanna start the scroll saw off at a slow speed and then you can raise it up. It's really helpful having this button at the front because you don't need to be reaching far over to turn it off. You can turn the scroll saw on and off right at the front of the machine. The motor is located on this side of the machine and is mounted on with three bolts. You can actually loosen those bolts and turn the motor clockwise or anti-clockwise depending on how aggressive of a cut you want. So that adjustment there will change the blade from cutting completely vertical up and down, which will leave a really fine finish to a more aggressive cut, which is more of a scooping motion. So it will leave a rougher finish, but it is a lot faster. Axman's to sell a few different sizes of scroll saw, depending on how big you want. But the throat of this scroll saw is 535 millimeters. So you've got plenty of room there to cut really large components. Another feature I really like about this scroll saw is how the blade tilts. On previous scroll saws I've used, it's actually the table that tilts which means you lose control of the workpiece and it's a lot harder to control. But on this scroll saw, it is the blade that tilts. So the table is gonna remain horizontal, so you're always gonna have that control. And to tilt the blade, it is so easy. You've got this lever at the front that you twist and you've just got this wheel that you turn. And as you can see, I'm not putting a lot of pressure or force on and you've got this gauge on the front so you can really accurately choose the angle you want and it goes all the way up to 45 degrees I'm just gonna to go to 30 degrees there and lock it in place. Impressed with this gauge at the front, it is very sturdy, made from thick gauge steel, so it's not gonna wear over time and it locks down really well. So Axminster gives you a selection of saw blades with the scroll saw, so you can try different ones out. In this pack, you've got reverse tooth, skip tooth, double tooth blades, also in a variety of TPI, so you can really work out which blade is your favorite and works best with the type of work you're doing. So there are all the features on the scroll saw. I'm really excited to give it a go, but before I do that, I wanna make an adapter for the dust collection. Now this scroll saw takes a 63 millimeter dust hose, but I wanna use my Bosch dust extractor and the hose is a lot smaller. The outside radius of it is actually 45 millimeters. So I'm gonna really quickly knock up an adapter so then this hose slots nicely in place and then we can get going. So I've got a scrap bit of plywood here and I'm just gonna draw a circle that has a diameter of 63 millimeters. That's gonna match the size of the outlet on the scroll saw so then I can just tape it in place. And I put a force on a bit into my drill that has the same diameter as my Bosch dust hose. And now I'm gonna drill a hole directly in the middle of that circle. Now I'm gonna cut the outside circle on the scroll saw. It'll be a good test to see how close to the line I can get. And I'm just gonna tape the hose into position at the moment. Okay, so I'm gonna lower this guard down because if I loosen my grip off the workpiece or just wanna take my hands away, this guard will stop the piece from bouncing up and down with the saw blade. So I started the scroll saw at slow speed and I'm just gonna raise it up. And as you can see, with this guard, I can take my hands off and the piece isn't moving around. That is really impressive. Every time I've used a scroll saw, you really need to grip the piece really tightly. And if you don't, it starts chattering with the saw blade. So this guard here just means I can take my hands off, adjust myself, and the work is stay in the same place.
So as you can see, it's a really simple adapter. It's just gonna be a friction fit with the hose. You could add a rubber lining on the inside so there's no chance the hose will fall out. But I'm just gonna take this in position. You could hot glue it around the edge as well. So that's secured nicely in position now. All I need to do is put the hose in. Now for the moment I've been waiting for, it's time to actually cut something out. Now I'm thinking of creating sort of an artistic stencil. I'm gonna cut out a wine bottle pouring out a glass of wine. I think that's gonna look pretty cool, sort of an outline cut out. So I'm gonna give it a go and we'll see what we come up with. So that was my first cut with this scroll saw. I found it really intuitive, really easy to control. I'm really happy with the result for my first uh, cut out. Some things I found really impressive and interesting is with such a thin blade, you think it's difficult getting a straight line. But as you can see with the neck of the wire bottle, I had no issues getting a straight line there. And especially with these sweeping curves, when you've got a very thin blade, you can imagine getting quite a wobbly line. But it was just so smooth and you have complete control doing, you know, sweeping curves and I had no issues at all following the line. Another thing I really like is the finish it gave. It sort of burnished the edge and it feels like the type of edge you'd get off a hand plane. So um, definitely don't need any sanding and that's perfect for scroll sawing because a lot of the time you're cutting out very small uh, details that you can't get sandpaper in. So you don't want to be worrying about having to sand those gaps. So that's perfect. I also found this safety guard really helpful, not only for protection, but it held the workpiece down constantly, so it gave me a lot more control. Especially with detailed stuff like this, you might wanna adjust your hand positioning, and you don't need to worry about the wood flying around and rattling up and down, especially with intricate stuff as well. If you have been working on it for a long time, your hands might cramp up, and you just wanna release your hands and adjust, and uh, the hold down will definitely keep the wood in the same place. So. I really like that. Other scroll saws I've used haven't had that feature, and if they have, they didn't work as well as this one. So that is the Actminster Professional Scroll Saw. I'm really impressed with this machine. The build quality is outstanding. As soon as you take it out of the box and you feel the weight and you see the thick gauge steel, you know it's gonna last a very long time, and I'm gonna get a ton of enjoyment out of using this machine. So I hope you enjoyed this unboxing, sort of walk through the features and test. If you're interested in learning more about Axminster scroll saws, then I'll put a link in the description down below to their scroll saw range. And if you appreciate the content I make, I'd be really grateful when purchasing a scroll saw or anything from Axminster's website, if you go through my link in the description, that is an affiliate link. So any purchase you make there, I'll get a small cut with no extra cost to you. So that's a great way of supporting the channel for free and it will help me keep making these videos for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. If you wanna see any of my build videos, I'll put a couple on the screen now. And yeah, thank you for watching. Please like the video and I'll see you very soon for the next one.